Hello and welcome to the next part of the Codesmith review. Um, the section is going to deal with weeks 9 and 10 of my Codesmith um, experience. And it's going to deal primarily with OSP launch, hiring, and uh, whiteboarding. So for week 9, I'm just going to go briefly go over the schedule. We had hack hours every day as always, which is just you work on an algorithm. And we had a lecture on Docker and AWS where you learn how to use Docker to make a container with some basic um, with some basic program that was built for you and then you learn to launch it on AWS which is definitely pretty tricky and AWS does definitely seem like uh, like overkill for most projects because essentially it gives you a lot of options but for smaller scale projects there's just better stuff out there that's a lot more intuitive but yeah we did learn about docker and AWS and uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment meaning let's say you finish a website and you want to launch it for other people to use you want to be able to update it and you want to be able to have that update reflect on where you launched it so we definitely went over that i think i would like to go over docker more on my own after the boot camp um, i had i did do a little bit of docker beforehand as well but they taught us how to write like docker files docker compose files all that kind of stuff not going to go too much into detail about that because i don't think it's too important but yeah so we also had a fellows Q&A. So basically what happens is if you want to apply to fellowship, which is you are essentially teaching after the 12 weeks. So you are teaching, well, it's like after you graduate, you go into a teaching role and then they pay you like thousand dollars a week or something. But it's also, you know, it can go on your experience and you're essentially teaching the next cohort for 12 weeks and it's like a contract role. Um, so I was kind of interested in it. I was like, why not, you know? Worst case scenario, they did say like you, you can apply to fellowships to look for jobs. And if you get a you know really good job during your fellowship, then it's whatever, like you can just go do that. And they do kind of recommend you not to, you know, hopefully it doesn't happen, but if it does happen, it's totally okay. Like it's, they understand. So yeah, they did talk about like what fellowship experience is like. I had a lot of questions. Um, and like I said, I am uh, looking to apply because I think I would be good at it. And, like, doing the hack hours and teaching people algorithms and doing like um, technical interviews and all that stuff. I think I'd be good at it. So I applied to that. Then we had a lecture on GitHub cleaning, which was basically, so for a lot of us, I think this is super common. When you go through the actual coursework, your commits, a lot of people's commits were just like not the best. They just said like, oh, done, you know, added something. They weren't like super professional. So they taught like what your GitHub should look like, what a professional GitHub should look like. Um, I think it is kind of easy for me because I am not trying to display, I mean, pretty much all the coursework I'm just going to make private because there's no point in displaying that. And I am not going to display really in my like solo project or iteration project or anything. I'm just going to work on, uh, either redo them or make bigger projects once I graduate and then just have, I don't think I need to display like three day projects on my GitHub or anything. So I'm not going to really focus on that. Um, and yeah, so that part was pretty straightforward. And we kept working on OSPs, so the whole week was us working on OSPs. And then for the next week, we had uh, one day off, and then they started focusing on whiteboarding. And we also had to submit our first resume draft, which they, they do kind of go into like hiring and what your resume draft should look like. It should be like 500 words, like how do you list your experiences, all that stuff. And the first draft is just like a rough draft of, you know, roughly all your stuff. And they said basically like, write as much as you can. We'll just tell you what to get rid of. For me, I have a lot of like unnecessary stuff, so I just wrote like, all my unnecessary stuff kind of thing and then get advice on like what to get rid of like do i write that i play poker do i write that i got like you know education in these things that like aren't relevant to cs and so on so then we were actually preparing for osp launch and luckily for us and i will give you a little bit of advice on osps i guess if you're working on it so our osp launch was supposed to be on thursday and we basically agreed and a lot of groups did this to agree to stop making any more changes in our OSPs like kind of the week before. So I think at the Friday before launch, so I think we had like, you know, a week after that to actually work on the launch stuff. And there's a lot of launch stuff. Like you have to make a website, you have to write an article, you have to write a GitHub readme, you have to actually like get your stuff deployed, a lot of stuff. And if you work on features last second, it's going to be pretty stressful for you. So I would recommend just like if you are working on your OSP, make a, you know, harsh deadline. Because no matter where you stop, you're always gonna think of like things to add after you're done. Like we finished and we we're like, oh, here's like these five things we can add. And I'll go over some of that as I do the demo for the OSP. But yeah, essentially launch, we did our launch and 
They also started going over whiteboarding, which is essentially like if you were to take a technical interview on algorithms, what you want that to look like. And that was okay, but I think I do think a problem we had, and they did they did do some of these. So they had these like hack hour with whiteboarding groups, which I wasn't a huge fan of, which essentially instead of doing like an algorithm problem, you have an hour in a group of four or five where they give you like 30 interview questions and they just say like, do whatever you want. So we ended up splitting into groups of two, but even then the problem I had with that was in a real interview when you are doing algorithms, um, your interviewer is always going to know the answer to the, to the question, right? Like they're going to have to ask that question a bunch of times. They're going to know the answer. They're going to know how to do it. They're going to be able to lead you in the right direction. The problem for me was I knew the answer to most of them just because I've done so many leak codes. But like if someone was interviewing me, most of them didn't know the answer to any of them. So then it's like, how do they lead me in the right direction if I didn't know the answer, if they don't know the answer themselves, right? So I definitely thought that it was not the best use of time. And if anything, like I would have just volunteered to interview more people and people <laughs> in the groups I was in, people were just like, hey, you're good at algorithms. Just like go through some of these um, to kind of show us like what it should look like. So I was like, okay, sure. So I'm not a huge fan of these. And then we also went into SDI whiteboarding which was system design because apparently people that graduated said they got asked more system design and that wasn't in the curriculum before. So they just wanted to get us into that. This was also one that I wasn't super big of a fan of because essentially we had like an hour and a half lecture on it. And then we had, we were doing like system design interviews afterwards. And we were, because system design interviews are kind of um, not vague, but they don't really have a right answer. It's more of like, a just talk about it. It was definitely hard to like know if we were doing the right thing or, you know, I felt like we were doing the right thing, but it's hard to say. So I definitely think for this, I am going to just like watch a course on it. I have some stuff on it that I'm going to look into it more deeply and look at some system design practice interviews, right? All that stuff. And I will say also, if another hint for this is pay attention to the tech docs, because a lot of the things that the tech docs are about, like load balancers or message queues or all these things are things that you can talk about in system design interviews, right? Like. I'd use a load balancer here, or I'd use a message queue here, or I'd use some other like web sockets for this reason, you know, the ups and downs. And like, what are the pros and cons of a relational versus non-relational database? All these things are good to know, but you don't really get to practice like a actually making the stuff because a system design interview would be something like, tell us how you design Twitter and write. The only way to practice designing Twitter is if you worked in a huge distributed system at your job. So if you didn't, there's no way to like practice it. You're not just going to like, you know, launch a hundred servers and like do it. So it's more of like a theoretical thing for most people. But as you have more work experience, your interviews get more focused on that because you are expected to have worked on these big systems and expect to know the trade-offs. But yeah, that was mostly roughly what happened for those two weeks. And then, yeah, we had resumes. And so now I want to talk about the OSP. And so for the OSP, Essentially, what happened was I'm going to go back a few weeks and just kind of talk about big picture and OSP and do a demo. So we had our ideation week where me and my group decided to look into Next.js, which was a really popular uh, Next framework or React framework, and we found some issues with it. And I'll briefly show some of that. So essentially, in Next.js, close this real quick. So this is like a sample Next.js um, program. You have your source code and all of your endpoints. It's um, it it has server side routing. And all of your endpoints um, just say page.js, which is really annoying, right? Like if you look at a file structure like this, all your stuff just says page.js and it's like, which page is this related to? Which page is this related to? This gets really annoying really fast, right? Um, so our idea was to make a more intuitive UI for Next.js users that are using the app router because everything is called the same thing to be able to navigate, to be able to visualize all their stuff and so we decided to make a VS Code extension for that. And essentially our idea was to make something that could help them visualize everything, could create routes, delete routes, and open stuff. And so I'm gonna briefly do a demo and I will show you the website we made as well and talk about it. So for a brief demo, if you actually look at the VS Code extension store, we actually published it. So if you search next nav, I actually have it installed. You can click install here if you didn't. And you can go to, so this technically works on any, uh, this technically works on like React as well, but it's intended for next. And then you can just do control shift P, type in next nav. And this will give you like a sample directory and I'll kind of explain it a little bit. So 
So essentially what happens is you have your root directory, which is a node here, and then you have all your paths. So this is what it would look like. So this is like your root folder, subfolders of the root folder, subfolders of that folder, and then all of your files and your files are the, we decided to only display JavaScript, TypeScript, and CSS. And like, you know, uh, JSX, CSX, but essentially only JavaScript, TypeScript, and CSS. Because this is mostly for Next developers and we don't need to show stuff like Python or whatever. So what happens if you want to use it? So essentially you right click your whatever folder you want. Uh, we recommend that folder. You can copy a path, a relative path, go to this import thing, paste it in. And this will give you your entire directory starting from the app and you can view it in a bunch of different ways and you can see your entire path and if you want to open up any file and anything it's a lot more convenient than using this so you can just code using this instead of using the actual like file explorer so let's say you wanted to open up something in your portfolio folder you can either click on it or you can just click in here pick a file open it up code you know so it's a lot more convenient also you can make files very easily you can just write a file name like page.jsx and it will create it. You can make as many things as you want. And I think we supported like CSS, SAS, SCSS, like common stuff. But if you make like a text file, we didn't want to show that in the actual directory, but it will make it. So you can make a text file. It's just not going to show it in here because we wanted to make it less cluttered. So you can make, you can open up files. You can make open, you can make new folders. You can make like folder and test two. You can do whatever you want essentially. You can delete files. You can delete folders. So if I make a file like page.jsx here, I can make it and then I can also delete it either by uh, actually the way you would want to do it is you want to click on the node and then you can just click this trash can delete it and you can delete folders as well by clicking this and type the folder or if you want to delete a folder with a subfolder let's say like about goes to test and I just want to delete the test folder if I delete the test folder then it would also delete the subfolder so that's the basic functionality and then it also shows server and client routing and essentially what happens is like here if you look, there's a page.jsx file and oh, like if you haven't used next, it's okay. Like you're probably not going to know this stuff, but essentially um, everything is default server side rendered. And if something is client side rendered, it'll say use client. So essentially if, if things are client side rendered, it will tell you that it's client side and you can use any folder technically as your starting directory. So if I wanted to use like dashboard or something as my starting directory, you can, it's just recommended to use the app and it's also recommended to do some next. Because if you do this in other stuff, like in React, uh, this would all be in React, everything's client side rendered, but it would say server because this is intended for next and other features we thought of. We thought of a lot of stuff that we didn't add. So something like uh, maybe a like a pop up or some kind of checkbox or something for files you want to display. So let's say you do want to display every single file. We can have an option for that. Also, we can't rename folders or files in this. So if you wanted to do something like that, that could be another like thing to add and a bunch of other things like that, right? Small things. Because like I said, as soon as you finish, you can always think of like more things to add. But yeah, essentially we published it in the VS Code store and we we deployed it. And we also, the nice thing about deploying is we actually made the website. I think I can actually pull it up here. So if I pull up next nav landing page, we actually made the website in next, uh, using next and we used, um, we imported components from Next, so the website actually looks pretty nice. And it, we used like Tailwind and a bunch of other stuff in it. Um, but yeah, the website we made really fast. It was quite convenient using, we essentially imported components from Next just to make it a lot easier. And I think that's more of a, a real world process. Like they do teach you how to use it, like HTML and CSS and stuff, but in the real world, you're gonna be importing components. You're not gonna be designing everything yourself. And so yeah, so we made the, the website using Next and we deployed it. And we actually deployed it to Vercel instead of AWS, which was really convenient because in Vercel, it's really easy. You just buy a domain and then you, you link a GitHub, like you link a GitHub repo to your domain and it will essentially just like run some tests and launch it. And it was really fast. It was like 10 minutes to uh, actually deploy. We're on AWS. It's like a ton of stuff you need to do. So for smaller scale, this was a single page app. We just deployed it in Vercel and it runs. So you could see here's like the site actually. So we have the next nav, we have the medium article for it, where like everyone wrote a media medium article explaining all of like how it all works. And yeah. And then we also have, uh, let's see. we have a Twitter we made, tweeted some stuff. We have a LinkedIn, we have the GitHub repo for the actual project. 
with a readme in it as well. And we have like a light and dark mode. And a lot of these were imported from Next Components, which makes it look like really nice right out of the box. So we took us like a day to make the site. Honestly, the, the longest part was making the GIFs. Then we have a link to download it from the store and we have like 40 downloads or something. I think we deployed it like four days ago, three days ago. So we're kind of seeing what's going to happen there. I think some actually, a couple of like big, um, I think like one big YouTuber actually retweeted it or like liked our video. And then we also got a post from someone on LinkedIn with like a decent following. So that's kind of cool. But yeah, I have my meme hiking picture on here and this is people I worked with and like all our LinkedIn's and all that stuff. So really nice to, uh, yeah, I would strongly recommend if you are going to use Next to import Next UI and use it in your website. Because as you can see, we literally made this in like less than a day and it looks really nice. And making all these things out of the box would be a pain. So... Um, yeah, so essentially we made a website, we deployed it, and we presented. And I guess some things I would share as like advice for OSP, I would say listen to tech talks, look into things that you're interested in. Um, also look into, try to focus during ideation week exactly on like what tools you're going to be using. We were a little bit confused on those. So we had to spend more time during during the first week of OSP to do that. But it was pretty much, if I had to say like the difficulty curve, it went kind of like super high up right away. And then it was super chill, like after the first week, like we were comfortably done, like everything was fine. We had like a few stressful days, but for the most part, it was pretty straightforward. So in the beginning, it's rough, but once you get used to it, it's pretty good. And so, yeah, and then I'm also going to link like the site and like the medium article and all that other stuff. So if you can like, if you want to clap the Medium article or uh, star the GitHub repo, that would be great. I'll link all that in the description. Um, and yeah, so I think we just have like a reinforcement project left and we are getting more into hiring. And so I'm probably just going to make one more video after the graduation, which is in like two weeks, just to like say how, how I like the hiring or didn't like the hiring. I will say as of now, um, some people weren't happy with like the resume feedback it was a little bit vague. Um, some people were, mine was okay. So I'll have to kind of look into that um, to give a better opinion in a few weeks. And I'm going to see how my fellowship uh, application goes and stuff. But yeah, so two weeks left, looking forward to graduating, actually applying to jobs. Um, and I do plan on focusing on actually like making more projects after graduation and probably just like make, uh, adding them to the YouTube. I'll probably, I think I'm probably going to just make stuff in Next. I think I really like Next. And I also want to do stuff with the Python backend just to kind of get like more of a feel for it because right now I've only been using Python for coding interviews and I want to actually like learn, um, you know, more under the hood stuff. Uh, but yeah, Next is a lot more, is a lot better than React in my opinion. It has a lot of um, built-in things out of the box. It's a lot faster. So it is something to, like it's good to get, it's good to get used to it. It's, it's also like a growing framework. It's like the most popular React framework. So if you do want to look into React frameworks, I would look into that. And if you want to use our app to do that, you know, that'd be cool as well. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be it for this video. So like I said, um, if you could, yeah, like clap the Medium article if you want to and uh, start the GitHub repo, especially if you're like a Codesmith uh, resident watching this or if you're applying, uh, you're going to want those things to happen for you when you apply. So it is appreciative if, uh, if, you, if, if you're looking into that, if you could do the same for uh, our group stuff. But yeah, I think that's gonna be it for this video. So hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, uh, please like and subscribe to the channel and leave some comments or feedback or anything if you want, or I can answer anything you guys want. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one after I graduate.